Tonight on WTOP 10 Nightly News, Governor Kathy Hochul is picketing what she is supporting. And it's annual walk to school day, how to celebrate. Plus, the 1861 challenge is happening here at SUNY Oswego. What it is and how to support it. WTOP 10 Nightly News starts now. And thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Neckers. And I'm Jaylene Rodriguez. The Federal Communication Commission conducted a nationwide test on all consumer cell phones earlier today. If you were near a phone around 2.20 this afternoon, you probably heard it before you saw it. You look at the number The of test the had two portions, the emergency alert system and wireless emergency alerts. They were conducted to make sure that the systems are affected in warning the public of emergencies. The alerts are used to make people aware of dangerous weather, missing children, and other critical situations. It has been used more than 84,000 times since it's launched in 2012. Today marks the 200th birthday of Oswego State University's founder, Edward Austin Sheldon. Sheldon was honored in many ways this past weekend. Students, alumni, and staff all came together to honor his life and achievements. Sheldon, whose legacy includes a passion for human connection, was honored at the 9th Annual Scholars Brunch on Saturday. Several alumni reunions also happened over the weekend, as well as the Alana Multicultural Leadership Conference. Oswego 1861 Giving Challenge presents the opportunity to unlock $60,000. The 1861 Giving Challenge started today on founder Edward Austin Sheldon's 200th birthday. It's meant to challenge the Oswego community and help students by making a gift to the fund for Oswego. If 861 people make a gift during the challenge, SUNY Oswego alumni Dr. Thomas Mall will donate $60,000 to the university. It started this morning at 8 and it ends tomorrow at 3.01 p.m. Who doesn't love cats and snacks? On Saturday, October 14th, the Oswego County Humane Society is hosting an event called Cats and Snacks from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. This event gives community members the opportunity to connect with one another. There will be free refreshments and, of course, lots of cats to play with. Any donations such as pet food, cat litter, or toys for the Oswego County Pet Food Pantry are encouraged. Today, people around Oswego participated in Walk to School Day, including Oswego Mayor Billy Barlow. The annual day is meant to make people more aware of the benefits of safety walking or biking to school. Mayor Barlow shared a picture with students from Kingsford Park Elementary School. Members of the Oswego City Police Department also joined in on the celebrations. Several officers walked to school with students and hosted coffee with the COP events at Stewart's, Bishop's Commons, and SUNY Oswego. And we had beautiful weather in Oswego to walk to school today. Let's take a first look at your forecast with Storm Team 10 meteorologist Brianna Saunders. Taking a look at our current conditions, it is clear out with our temperature sticking around 68 degrees. It is a beautiful night to go stargazing, but it is not going to stay like that for much longer. We have a low pressure system that's going to be moving into our area soon, bringing some precipitation. I'll have more details on the timing of that as we head into the weekend. But back to the desk, that's all I have for now. With the United Auto Workers strike now in its third week, strikers received a much needed morale boost. New York Governor Kathy Hochul joined the picket line of strikers in Rockland County today in support of their cause. The governor's appearance comes as President Biden joined picket lines in Michigan a week ago. And Detroit's big three automakers are furloughing or laying off thousands of non-union employees. At the strike, Hochul says she fully supports the union. A former gynecologist is being accused of sexually assaulting more than 500 women. More than 300 sexual abuse claims were filed against Richard Hayden this week alone. Dr. Hayden used to work at Columbia University earlier this year. Hayden was sentenced to 20 years in prison for sexually assaulting his patients for decades. 
The new lawsuit represents a significant increase in the number of victims taking legal action against Hayden. Those 300 new claims were filed in the New York State Supreme Court. Former President Donald Trump's lawyers filed notice to appeal last week's fraud ruling against him. That civil case in New York involved Trump's business dealings. He was accused of lying on financial statements to make his businesses appear more valuable than they actually were. Prosecutors asked for $250 million in damages. The judge ruled in their favor, saying Trump and his co-defendants were liable for persistent and repeated fraud. The appeal was fully expected. Violent crimes in New York City are down this year, when compared to data from this time last year. That's according to statistics released by the New York Police Department. Those numbers show that murders are down almost 11 percent, crimes like rape and burglary are down more than 12 percent, and shootings are down 26 percent. Subway crimes were also down in New York City. Officials say flooding high crime areas with more officials during that summer months is one key reason for the declines. The overall crime rate was only down slightly for the year due to the increase in felony assaults and auto thefts. Still ahead tonight, a SUNY Oswego professor just received a major grant for his research. We'll tell you where that professor and several of his students are going to do that research. Plus chaos in the House of Representatives, the step Congress is taking to select a new Speaker of the House. Say, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this Storm Team 10. Say it with me Storm, Storm Team 10. Jill told me it was Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? Al Roker. <laughs> Welcome back, I'm Storm Team 10 meteorologist Brianna Saunders. Taking a look at our surface map, we can see we have our high pressure that's been dominating our area for the last couple of days. This high pressure is what's been bringing us our high temperatures and our dry, clear skies. But if you take a look to our west, heading towards uh, Chicago and St. Louis, we can see our cold front that's approaching our area. This is going to bring some precipitation into our area heading towards the weekend. I'll have more on that in a little bit. But taking a look at our out-the-door forecast, we can see our temperatures start to climb as we head towards the afternoon. We start around 66 degrees at 9 a.m. Pretty warm for this time of the year, and we head towards almost 80 degrees by 3 p.m. This is very unseasonably warm, but as I said before, that cold front will be approaching, which is going to kick these temperatures out of here. Taking a look at our chance of an inside-out umbrella, we can see we have a 40% chance of your umbrellas getting turned inside out. Fortunately, though, you won't need those umbrellas tomorrow, but you will as we head towards the rest of the week. 
Taking a look at our precipitation chances, we can see there's a very small chance heading into our overnight hours of some rain, maybe a scattered shower or two. Heading towards Friday and Saturday, we can see uh, the precipitation dominates our area. We're going to have rain falling throughout both of the days. And heading towards the rest of the week, we can see um, towards Sunday and Monday, our precipitation chances slowly decrease as a low pressure system moves out of our area. Taking a look at our seven day forecast, we can see at Thursday, uh, we have our high around 80 degrees. Again, very unseasonably warm for this time of the year with a couple of clouds scattered throughout the sky. Our low will be around 64 degrees. Heading towards Friday, we can see our high is around 71 degrees, still kind of warm for this time of the year. We have our rain moving into the area overnight. Again, just a chance of some showers on Friday. Our high around 71, our low around 62. Heading towards Saturday and Sunday, we can see those temperatures slowly start to decrease with our high around 62 and our low around 55 on Saturday. It should be a washout day on Saturday, so unfortunately some weekend plans aren't going to work out in your favor. If you're planning on doing anything outside, I would plan on moving anything inside. Heading towards Sunday, our temperatures drop off even more with our high only at 51 degrees and our low at 48. Again, some showers in the area. Heading towards the next week, Monday, we have a high of 56, a low of 49 with just a chance of some scattered showers. Tuesday, that chance disappears. It's dry, but it will be overcast and gloomy with our high around 57, a low around 59. And on Wednesday, we have a high 55. Again, another overcast day. That's all I have for weather. Now back to the desk. A meteorology professor is receiving a grant worth more than $200,000. The grant is from the National Science Foundation, and it's meant to support research into cold air outbreaks in the subarctic region. Professor Yonggong Wang will take four students with him on the research trip in early 2024. Wang says the cold air outbreaks in the region of his studies are similar to lake effect snow patterns in Oswego, intense and unpredictable. The U.S. House of Representatives is in uncharted territory and work can't get done until a new speaker is elected. What does that mean for Americans beyond Capitol Hill? Karen Kefa is in Washington with the latest. Eight House replications standing. Oh. Eight House Republicans standing know. by their votes to remove Kevin McCarthy as House Speaker and grind congressional business to a fault. There's a lot of angry people, but I, I would submit to you, when we oh, get this, God. when we get a um, new leadership in, we're going to be just fine. The current interim Speaker can perform limited functions like recess, adjournment, and preside over the vote for a new permanent Speaker, but legislation cannot move. You can't actually legislate on the House floor right now, so this effectively has frozen the country. With a new deadline to fund the federal government a little more than six weeks away, even some Senate Republicans are concerned about the lower chamber. To my colleagues in the House, you know, follow your heart, but take your brain with you. A vote on a new speaker is at least one week away, and some House Republicans don't want to see it drawn out. Having our House uh, in, in adjourned when we should be putting appropriation bills on the floor and uh, getting this country back up and running doesn't help anyone. A long fight could also unsettle Wall Street. Last week, Moody's warned a government shutdown could prompt it to downgrade U.S. debt, a move that could dent the entire U.S. economy. With a shutdown threat averted last weekend, another looms on November 17th. Democrats watching closely. A lot of work to be done. We need to move quickly and get this resolved from the chaos in the Republican caucus. In Washington, I'm Karen Kefa. At least five people are dead and 23 Indian Army personnel are missing in northeastern India following flash flooding in the area. The flash floods have caused water levels to suddenly rise 15 to 20 feet higher than normal. At least three bridges have collapsed, and about 420 people from two districts have been moved to relief camps. So far, three people have been found alive by the ongoing search and rescue operation. Pope Francis is sharing his thoughts on the dangers of climate change. Earlier today, the Pope issued an official declaration saying that the effects of climate change are, quote, already irreversible and devastating to humanity. The Pope also says the climate is coming close to a breaking point. In that declaration, Pope Francis blamed big industries as well as world leaders for climate change and its effects. When WTOP 10 nightly news continues, healthcare workers are striking, 
what they stand for. And Uber expands its services, their new venture and more. Welcome back to Major Discussions. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. Welcome back, and thank you for choosing WTOP 10 for your nightly news. In consumer news, Uber is unveiling a new feature to take your returns off your hands. The rideshare giant now offers a service that drops off e-commerce packages at a local post office, FedEx, or UPS outpost. Uber says drivers can take as many as five prepaid sealed packages. Those packages must be valued under $100 and weigh less than 30 pounds. The service costs a flat fee of $5. Google is betting big on artificial intelligence with its new mobile phones. The company's Pixel 8 smartphone lines comes with AI built in. The AI can do things like summarize new articles for users. Google also built photo and video editing tools that lets AI do things like take a series of photos and combine them into one, where everyone looks their best. Outside that, the actual hardware isn't radically different from the previous generation of Pixel phones. The baseline model will be available for $100 less than the cheapest iPhone 14 at $700. Right now, a historic strike is underway. Tens of thousands of Kaiser Permanent Healthcare workers have walked off the job in several states. Mike Valerio has the latest. The largest healthcare workers strike in United States history kicking off Wednesday morning with more than 75,000 unionized Kaiser Permanente workers walking off the job and walking onto the picket lines. We have a, uh, a crisis inside, a staffing crisis uh, that affects us and uh, subsequently affects our patients. I've seen patients die because of the short staffing and they wanted us to be quiet about it and I'm not being quiet anymore. Respect. More money in our the coalition of Kaiser Permanente unions calling for better pay and better staffing, saying in their notification statement to the company that if a deal isn't made by the end of the strike on Saturday, quote, we are prepared to engage in another longer, stronger strike in November. We have made many proposals to try to solve the Kaiser short staffing and Right now, the Kaiser executives are much more interested in their bottom line than providing high quality patient care. With about 40% of its staff on strike, Kaiser Permanente says it has contingency plans in place so it can continue to provide safe, high-quality care for its 12.7 million members and patients. A spokesperson for the company saying, quote, We have detailed continuity plans in place in all of these markets that include the use of non-represented and management staff along with contingency workers. In addition, all of our physicians will be available. In Los Angeles, I'm Mike Valerio. 
Kaiser Permanente said Wednesday morning that it remains in discussions with a coalition of unions representing striking employees, even as workers walk off the job. The company says there has been significant progress and they remain committed to reaching an agreement. Coming up in sports, Jaden Jiggets has the latest. Jaden? Coming up, we have an ACC matchup preview and more. I'll have your full sports report after the break. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. The kind of late, kind of late, kind of late, the kind of late, late show with Chloe and Anna. Like licorice, Twizzlers, absolutely nasty. The thought of turkey is just nauseating. I, I think you're wrong, is what I think. You think I'm wrong a lot of times. I do think you're wrong a lot. When you look at the number of disasters in the U.S., Chances are, every area will deal with some kind of emergency in the next decade. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are, you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. I guess I have really been looking for love in this dating app. Yep, yeah, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home. Jiggets with WTOP 10 Nightly News. Kicking things off tonight, Oswego's women's volleyball team falls short in three straight competitive sets against SUNY Morrisville. Both set one and set three ending with the score of 25 to 22 and set two ending with 25 to 23. Despite the loss, the Lakers gave the Mustangs a battle as seniors Georgia Fari and Grace Taylor combined for a total of 18 kills in the game. Oswego will now look to improve their record this Friday, October 6th, as they will travel to face SUNY Plattsburgh at 6 p.m. Despite the loss, the, 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 the team actually played for a good cause. Let me t see my sports reporter right here, Lucas. Oswego's women's volleyball team hosted a cancer awareness game against the Marsville Mustangs. At the door of the gymnasium, there was a battle with a list of different types of cancers. Next to that list, there was a paper asking people to write their name of a family member whose life has been affected by cancer. The game focused on raising awareness with Pink October as the main cause. Players from both teams wore a pink bow in their hair during warm-ups. The Oswego team changed its regular uniform colors from green and gold to custom pink jerseys. As you said, Jaden, the game ended three sets to zero for the Mustangs, breaking the strike of two wins by the Oswego side. Going into outside sports, Oswego Field Hockey ends their three-game losing streak with a win on the road against Cayuca, final score being 5-1. Lakers took over late in the game, scoring four out of their five goals in just the second half alone. Oswego will be back home Saturday, October 7th, for their breast cancer awareness game against SUNY Geneseo at 3 p.m. Lakers fans, make sure to come support and wear pink. Moving to the Qs, former Syracuse men's lacrosse captain Cole Kurse has been named to the roster for the upcoming USA Lacrosse Fall Classic. During his time as co-captain with the Orange, Kurse was an all-ACC men's lacrosse team selection and logged 37 points with 26 goals and 11 assists. Professionally, Kurse was named PLL's 
Jimmy Reagan, teammate of the year, and signed a two-year deal with the Halifax Thunderbirds of the NL. C. Cole played alongside his brothers Colin and Connor on October 13th to 15th at the USA Lacrosse headquarters in Sparks, Maryland. Staying with the Orange, Syracuse football team will be traveling down south this Saturday for their second ACC contest of the season against North Carolina. The 4-1 Orange will look to fix the errors they had last week against the Clemson Tigers and stay undefeated on the road. The game will take place at Kean Stadium in North Carolina on Saturday, October 7th at 3.30 p.m. and could be watched on ESPN. Now, moving into professional sports, we have MLB wild card. We have a Miami Marlins facing on the Philadelphia Phillies. They're located right now at Citizens Bank Park. And so far right now, we got the first two. Oh, would you look at that? What a hitter already. Alex Bo making his run. And he got one of his players in for RBI double. Already making an impact. Already making an impact. Right there, and oh, we got another, oh my, that ball went flying right there. Oh, but okay, one of the Marlins players got it. Oh, wait, what a slot, oh, what a slide and a score, that boy saved. Okay, oh, we see the Philadelphia, we see the Philadelphia Philly pitcher sitting there, getting the person out of there. And oh, oh, what another hit, and that ball is flying, that ball is flying like Superman. And of course, that's Bryce Harper running down, he's just running. He is running, he's running, and oh, makes the score. Mm, let you look at that. And oh, okay, what another hit. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Oh, oh, okay. What a, oh, what a save. And the Philadelphia Phillies end up winning the game. Thank you, Jaden. Stick around for our pets of the week. <laughs> Meet the pets of the week, BK and Lilo. These two cats recently lost their homes. Now, they're looking for a new friend to help them out during their golden years. Both BK and Lilo are around 10 years old. Lilo is a love bug, while BK shows his gratitude with calmer affection. If you like to adopt either of these two cats, you can find them at the Oswego County Human Humane Society. So Jaden, do you like cats? Be honest with me. Me personally, I'm a dog's person. Okay, I love, like, listen, I got no issues with cats. Okay, cats are cool. 
but I love dogs. I'm a dog person. I'm allergic to cats, so I, I also don't like so cats. So you're a dog person too? Yes. yes. Yeah. You see, that, that's two that's two already. Yeah, cats were never my thing. They always hated me, so I'm more of a dog person too. Hey, would you look at that? We Number all throw people. What about you? Wow, I mean, I'm I'm with dogs and cats. I have both. <laughs> all right. So we just going to agree that all dogs right, are better? All right, Jaden. That's our report for tonight. <laughs> Thank you for... Uh,